So let's take a look at problem number one, square root of 72. So the first thing we do is we write a factor tree, and you think of anything times something else to give you 72. And I know that 2 times 36 is 72, the, the 2 times the 30 is 60, the 2 times the 6 is 12, and then the 60 and the 12, 72. Now 36, I know that 9 times 4 is 36, and the uh, 9 here, I know 3 times 3 is 9, and the 4, I know that 2 times 2 is 4. Now this is a square root. So because it's a square root, I'm looking for pairs of numbers. So I see that I have a pair of 2's right here, and I also have a pair of 3's right there. So this 2, since we found a pair, comes out of the radical as a single 2. This 3 comes out as a single 3. We have to multiply it times what's already there. This 2 here is, has no partner, so it, it doesn't come out of the radical. It stays under the radical. And then we have 2 times 3 is 6, and then we have that square root of 2 left over. So the answer to this problem is 2 times the square root of 2. Now in the last lesson I taught you how to check these. And I think I'm going to check the first maybe two problems or so, but then after that I'm going to stop checking because at some point we just have to assume, you have to know how to check and you're just going to know that that works. But let's for the first maybe two problems here go ahead and check and verify that this is correct. So we're saying that this times itself should give us 72. So if we check it, we put 6 times the square root of 2. Times itself means we're squaring it. And what we said before with these exponents, they apply to every term inside. So the 6 gets squared, and this square root of 2 here also gets squared. Now, when we have a square root and a square, this square is the exact opposite, and it kind of undoes or annihilates the square root. And so all you have left over, 6 times 6 is 36. The 2 is left over after the annihilation, and 36 times 2 is 72, because you have two, uh, 60 and then 12, 72. And so we know that this is the correct answer. 6 times the square root of 2 is the correct answer. Now, I usually don't like to talk too much about decimals, but just, you know, just for giggles, if you put square root of 72 in a calculator, it's going to return something like 8.49. Now really, this decimal goes on and on forever with no pattern because it's irrational. But this is what the calculator will give you if you cut it to two decimal places. Now if you put in 6 and multiply it by the square root of 2, the square root of 2 comes out to like 1.41 and in an infinite set of decimal places. Take that 1.41 and multiply by 6, the calculator is going to give you, uh, again, 8.49. In the exact uh, last decimal position might be a little different, uh, be, depending on how many decimal positions you carry, but I'm just showing you that this number that you get is exactly the same thing as what you start with. These are the same thing, all right? And if you take 8.49 and multiply it by 8.49 as a decimal, you're going to get something very close to 72. If you think about it, 8 times 8 is 64, and 9, going one up from here, 9 times 9 is 81, so, so 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, so 8 and a half roughly squared is going to be somewhere in the middle between somewhere between 64 and 81 and so when you multiply this out it does work out to be 72. Now of course it's going to get closer and closer to 72 the more decimal place, places that you carry. If you cut it to two decimals it may not be exact. All right so again let's solve the next problem we'll check it and then beyond that we're not going to check anymore uh, because we have to kind of move on from that. So here we go square root of 75. All right, what times what is 75? Well, I happen to know that 25 times 3 is 75. I happen to know that 5 times 5 is 25, and these are all prime numbers, so I can stop. I'm looking for a square root. So that means this is a pair, pairs that I'm looking for. So this 5 will come out of the radical as a single 5. This stays underneath with no partner, so the square root of 3 gets multiplied times 5. And the answer is 5 times the square root of 3. Again, if you calculate this, in a calculator and take the square root of 3, is like 1.7 and a bunch of decimals, times 5, these are going to be exactly the same thing. To check this guy, take 5 times the square root of 3 and let's go ahead and square it and see if it equals 75. The square gets applied to the 5. The square also gets applied to the square root of 3 here. And the square cancels with the square root, and we're left with, this is 25, 5 times 5 is 25. This is all that's left over, and you get, of course, 75, which is exactly what you expect. So again, for the rest of the problems, we'll solve it. We're not going to check it because I want you to know that you can check, but we don't need to do it for every single problem. All right, what about square root 
300. All right, you could do 150 times two. I'm gonna choose something a little more familiar, three times 100. And for 100, you could do whatever you want, two times 50, four times 25. I'm just gonna go with the tried and true 10 times 10 because I know it's a pair. And because I'm looking at square roots, I can just stop there and I can circle that pair. This single 10 will come out of the radical, but this three has to stay behind under the radical because it did not have a partner. And the answer is 10 times the square root of three. And that is the exact answer. If you square this thing, you're gonna get 300 back. All right, next problem, cube root of 54. Cube root of 54. All right, well, I know that uh, nine times six is 54. I know that three times three is nine. I know that three times two is six. I've got prime numbers in the bottom, but now I do not actually have a square root here. I have a cube root. So because of that, I'm looking for not pairs. I'm looking for triplets of numbers and I see a triplet of threes. So that three comes out as a single. This two has to stay under the radical, but it's a cube root. So it's the cube root of two. So three times the cube root of two. Do not read this as three cubed. This is three times the cube root of two. And that is the final answer. Now I said I wouldn't check any more of these, but I'm gonna make an exception because I wanna do one check on the cube root. Three times the cube root of two. In order to check it, you have to multiply this times itself and then times itself again. And that means it's gonna be cubed. So the cube applies to the three and the cube applies to this as well. So the cube root of two, we need to cube that. Now, just like a square undoes a square root, a cube undoes a cube root. And what you have is this three times three times three, uh, you can think of it as three times three times three. Well, you have three times three is nine, and then times three, 27. So this works out to be 27, and then the two is all that's left over after the canceling. And 27 times two actually is 50. Four. 27 times two is 54, so you know it's the right answer. All right, now, pinky promise, no more checking because we need to get through the end of this lesson before the end of time, but you can check every one of them. All right, next problem, third root or cube root of 135. So just think of anything times, it's something else. I know it's divisible by five, and when you do that long division, you know that five times 27 is equal to 135. And for 27, I know that three times nine is 27. And for nine, I know that three times three is nine, and I have now prime numbers all in the bottom. I'm looking for a cube root, so I'm actually looking for a triplet of numbers, which I found. The three will come out as a single, and the five is left behind under this radical. So it's times, I guess I'll take the dot away, times the third root of five. Three times the cube root of five, this is the final answer. Again, this is not three cubed, this is three times the cube root of five. This is the final answer. Check it if you wish, it'll, it'll work out. Next problem, almost done. Square root, not cube root, square root 320. All right, so what times what is 320? So I know this is gonna be divisible by 10, uh, that's gonna be the easiest thing. I know it's divisible by five, but I know that I can write this as 10 times 32 because anything times 10, you just add a zero. And I know that this 10 is two times five. I guess I'll write it to make it a little easier. I'll write it as five times two. And this uh, 32, I know I can, write it as, I can write it as eight times four if I want, but I can write it as two times 16 is 32. And this 16, I can write it as four times four. Now I could break the fours down, but I don't need to because I'm looking for a square root. So as soon as I see pairs, I can start circling them. And I have also a pair of twos. But I, again, I could break them down. I'll get exactly the same answer. So what I have is a single two will come out, multiply by a single four, which will come out, multiply by this, but that stays under the radical. And the two times four is eight. And then we have the square root of five there, eight times the square root of five, that's the right answer. Actually on my paper, I have a completely different factor tree. Uh, I have a totally different factor tree. I did five times 64, um, and then you break that down further and you get exactly the same thing. I'm just pointing out to you that it doesn't matter what factor tree you put here. If you're doing it right, you get the correct answer. You get the right answer every time. All right, two more problems and we're done. Let's take the cube root of 4,000. Looks very hard, but the number 4,000 is actually easy to deal with 
because I can just write this as 4 times 1,000, right? And I can write this 1,000 as 10 times um, 100, okay? And I can write this 100 as uh, 10 times 10, right? Now, you might say, why is he not breaking the 4 down? Well, you can. I can do that. I can totally do it, 2 times 2. But the, the thing is, is I'm looking for triplets because this is a cube root. So this 2 times 2 is not going to do anything. The triplet that I found is this. So what you're going to do is, I guess I'll just leave it like this. If you did break it down, you know, this comes out as a single 10 because it's a triplet. But here's a pair of 2s. They, they are going to stay under the radical. Both of them are going to stay under the radical because I couldn't find 3 of them. I only found 2 of them. So the 2 times 2 that I found, it can stay under the radical which is 10 square root, uh, I'm sorry, cube root of four. So 10 times the cube root of four, that's the final answer. Now, if I didn't break this four down, if I just left it like this, what would the answer have been? The 10 would come out and the four would be under the cube root. That's exactly what I got. So if I didn't break it down, the four would stay under there. If I did break it down, uh, I don't have a triplet. I can't pull it out. So this has to stay under the radical and it just becomes a four. So it doesn't matter how you go about doing it. You're going to get the correct answer. And here is our final question. Square root, 150. Easiest thing here is to write this as 10 times 15, because I know I multiply by 10, I just add a zero. Now the 10 can be written as uh, two times five, and the 15 can be written as five times three. And these are all prime numbers in the bottom. I'm looking for pairs, and I see a pair of fives. That's the only pair I have. That comes out as a five here, and underneath this radical, you see, in all the other problems, it, this was the only exception, the twos kind of stay under there. Everything else has to stay under. The two and the three both have to stay under, and of course they're multiplied. So what do you have here? Five times the square root of this, six. Five times the square root of six. So if you have multiple things left over, that's fine. They both stay under multiplied together. And that's, you know, it, it's very logical the way that works out. So five times the square root of six. So we've conquered the idea of simplifying radicals with numbers. Where we're going with this is that we're going to solve equations soon and we're gonna to have to learn how to deal with radicals. The most important thing you can understand about radicals, in my opinion, square roots, is that a square root and a square are opposites. They undo each other. And I keep saying it over and over because uh, in a couple of lessons we're going to solve equations and I'm going to say, hey, we can get rid of the square root by doing this. And you're going to say, I get it because we've already seen that a million times. But if I don't show you that, then it looks like magic. It's not magic. They undo each other. Just like addition and subtraction are opposites and multiplication and division are opposites, square root is opposite of a square, and a cube root is opposite of a cube, and so on. So solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.